This show brought to you by Rickmotech. Are you considering a Thrustmaster product? If so, you should consider Rickmotech. They are an authorized Thrustmaster dealer. They take support to the next level and offer optional firmware updates, product testing, and support, all free of charge and will ship worldwide. Check them out at rickmotech.com. Hi, let's try that again. Gone for a month and you see you forget to turn on the mic. Welcome to This Week Inside Sim Racing. I'm John Sable. Good to be back. I'm waiting for the comments now to scroll that you're not getting any audio. But yes, back and today it's just me. <laughs> I know I'm, see I'm seeing the updates now on chat saying no sound. You know, this show, I've been thinking about it more and for a long time I tried really hard to make this show to be like, you know, really awesome and then we get these technical issues and it takes a lot of time and it takes away from reviews we're doing so that's why i've now i've decided that you know these shows i'm going to kind of just whip together and they're going to be what they're going to be you're going to see that in today's show today's show there's a lot of me just kind of grabbing stories from the website but yeah uh just me this week billy's uh busy darren's busy and uh Boy, we're busy getting a whole bunch of uh, stuff ready because we have E3 coming up next week, which means there will not be a live show next week. So uh, we come back after being gone. I think we were gone for five weeks, I believe. And uh, we come back, we tease you, and then we leave. So um, this is kind of how things work. But, uh... <laughs> oh man, <laughs> yes, I... See, I go to Italy for my honeymoon. Oh boy. And, uh, yes, I go over there, and I'm like, wow, everyone dresses just like me over here. All these V-necks and skinny jeans. It was weird. <laughs> so, uh, and yes, yes, Tim, I, I, I know, I know uh, American Truck Simulator came out with an update today. We're not going to talk about it, because, honestly, I haven't driven American Truck Simulator in a long time. So, um, so anyway, let's go ahead and... Uh, Italy made me younger. I don't know about I don't know about that. Uh, it was a good time. I'm gonna give a quick review of Italy later because that's what I do. I review things, and it feels weird not to. Um, but we'll get to that later after we go through some sim racing news, covering stuff over the last week, and then we have a whole bunch of happenings, happening, happenings, happening, and uh, then we'll do some Q and A. But we're gonna keep this uh, nice and loose today, and since I got to spend the whole time talking with just me. So uh, let's go ahead and chat about things. <laughs> chat about things in chat. Oh man, the comments already are, are fantastic. Um, uh, Martin asked, was there, there was, was there no iRace for Life this year? There was no iRace for Life this year. They decided to take a year off um, with the hopes of coming back next year. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the news. Uh, first news item up this week is uh, Race Room had an update last week with another Swedish track coming out, Falkenberg and WTCC 2017. Uh, I actually didn't know they were updating WTCC to 2017. Um, I guess you can say liveries because that's more or less what it is. But also came out with the new track here. So that is neat. I have not had a chance to try this out myself. Curious if any of you guys have tried out this track uh, yet. But uh, since I've gotten back, I've been in scramble mode trying to get a bunch of other stuff done. Then there are some other patch updates here, some flag rule stuff. They got better compatibility with the close port wheelbase 2.5 from Fnatic. And there, were no, and there was also some VR updates, which I got to, again, jump back into uh, race room and and try out VR and see how that's progressing. So uh, there you go. So that's the first update from Race Room. Um, honestly, I don't have a whole lot more to add to that one because I haven't had a chance to try out Race Room in a little bit. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Brandon, will the new Micro Machines game have will support? Asking for a friend. You know, when I went out to San Francisco back in... Um, I think I was out there the end of March, beginning of April, to drive Dirt 4. And we'll, I'll talk a little bit about Dirt 4 later. We've had, um, we got access to Dirt 4 on Friday, I believe. Um, 
But anyway, when I went out there to first drive it, they also had they were p- promoting three games in this um, this this place where they promote a lot of games out there in San Francisco. And it was Dirt Four. It was another one that was like a really popular. That most there was a lot of people from the gaming media there to cover that game. And then there was Micro Machines, and the Micro Machines area was kind of sad because they had like one developer there. I think they had like uh, four different stations set up. I don't even know if that's a. I assume that's a console game. But anyway, um, let's just say that the guy that was with Micro Machines was kind of lonely. He, he was kind of there by himself for a long time. It's kind of like, guys, you can want to come play the game. And even like the the people that I interact with the uh, the. PR group was like, you can go play Micro Machines, and I'm like, ah, uh, no. <laughs> so, uh, it was bad enough that they only had one wheel set up for Dirt 4, but that's kind of how those things go. So, um, yep. Uh, let's see. Enough of that tangent. Let's see. Let me check chat right here. Direct drive stuff. Yeah, we'll talk a little more about that later. Um, next news item. F1 2017, as I put it, has old ass cars coming. And uh, in the past week, we learned about another of the older cars coming, and that is the RB7, I believe. I know it's going to tell us at the end. This is their car from the 2010 Formula One season, one of the best seasons in Formula One, in my opinion. And I'm curious if um, I'm curious if anyone's really excited about these older cars coming to F1 2017. Um, so you got the you got you got the Red Bull there, and then going back, there's also the Williams from '92, the '88 McLaren, and then the 2002 Ferrari. And uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to get a feedback from you guys in chat if there's a lot of interest in having these older cars mixed into F1 2017. Um, the fascinating thing is, and I'm. I well, I'm probably spoiler. This, this week on Beyond the Gloves, I want to talk about E3, uh, do an E3 preview. But uh, E3 is next week. I'm going to be going and checking out F1 2017. I already got my meeting all set up to chat with the guys from Codemasters, which is good because last year I had a crash at a party, um, so that was kind of awkward. So I'm glad this year I'm official. And um, yeah, we have not seen or heard boo about the 2017 cars. What you think would be the you know the primary focus of an F1, yearly F1 title. I mean, it kind of has to be. It's officially licensed. So it's it's kind of odd because the game, I think, believe is due in August. I want to say end of August, like last year. And um, at least before E3 last year, we had seen screenshots of, uh, of the cars and, and stuff like that. We haven't seen anything this year. So uh, it's going to be fascinating to see what I'll get to try out there. And I hope we get to try out the 2017 cars and maybe not just the old cars. I mean, hopefully I get to try out both. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see and talk to them and see how the old cars integrate with the current cars. Um, I see some of you guys are pretty stoked about the old cars. That was one thing. What was it? Was it was it F1 2015 or 14 that had the old cars? And I, I know a lot of people enjoyed that. So... Um, Anyway, that will be interesting to see. So now we know there's four uh, quote unquote classic cars coming to uh, coming to F1 2017. Uh, where is Billy Boy? Billy Boy had to work his day job today. So hopefully Billy's maybe if uh, he's having a slow day at the uh, shop, he can, uh, he can he can tune in and join and join chat. Um, okay, so F1 2013 had the classic cars. Okay, so that's right. But, uh, yep, so we'll see how that turns out. I'm really interested to see, I, I mean, I don't think they've gone into E3 knowing, like, this little about the title in a lot, long time. It's just kind of odd to go in and not hearing anything. So, uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. Uh, let's see, moving on. So, jumping over to hardware news this week, uh, Fnatic had a couple of big announcements. First up was the announcement of the Fnatic CSL Elite PlayStation 4 wheel coming to Europe and Australia only right now. Um, so, this is essentially an updated version of the Xbox One PC compatible. Oh, you know, this is awkward when my page doesn't load. Let's try this one more time. Uh, wait, let's try this again. Maybe, you know, technology. This is again. This is why this live show can't be too like on the nose because I know things are just gonna break. 
one more time. Okay, and there's the rest of the page. Very good. So, um, go through some pictures here. Essentially, this is an update of the CSL Elite that came out last year. That was for the Xbox One and PC. We reviewed it. Um, first time around, I kind of had a mixed review uh, of it. Uh, then I got the production version. I had a better time with it. I did a shootout with that versus the uh, CSW V2 and then the, T the Thrustmaster TSPC Racer. And it and the TSPC Racer using the Fnatic Formula Rim, I thought were like super even. Um, but my big, one of my big complaints about the original CSL launch is it only had the P1 rim, which was kind of like, eh, it was, it's okay. Um, thankfully, since then, it's dropped down in price. I think it's like about $80 right now, um, which I think is uh, really, I think that's really good. I think, I think but, well, I don't know about really good, but I think $80 is more of a fair price for that rim. So, uh, yeah, so there you go. That is, let me get back up to the story here. The updates are kind of fascinating because it's, it's a CSL wheel from last year, but now they've gone and they've taken the electronics from the new uh, CSW V2.5 uh, wheel. So it's, it says it doesn't have as much torque, but it should be faster. So that'll be fascinating to see what that uh, equates in the real life. Uh, and then it also has these buttons here that you can change out, which is pretty fascinating. So, uh, yeah, this is, um, I think this is going to be a pretty interesting wheel. And part of the reason why I think it's going to be interesting is because I already have one. <laughs> that was my attempt at trying to be sneaky. So, this, boys and girls, hopefully you can still hear me, I'll talk up, is the CSL PS4 wheel that can't be used in America. And here I am in the U.S. Um, I have not tried this yet. I just got this yesterday, I believe. Um, so, no say on that yet, but, as I haven't hooked up the wheel, um, I do think it looks nicer. I do think they've, they've gone, and I don't know if it's just critique that I had or critique that others have, and they've replaced this face here, and they've gone to all black, and it looks much nicer. Actually, it's plastic, but it looks like it's, it has like a metal-like finish. So, uh, there we go. So we have that. And then, what's really made a good first impression is this rim. So, I, I, like I said, I, I had kind of... Um, the P1 rim wasn't my most exciting thing. Uh, most exciting thing? I don't know if that's the right way to say it. We reviewed it. And we gave it overall a pretty good review, but the more I used it, the less and less I was a fan of it. So I went and, um, but they've, I think they've gone and they've really made some pretty nice looking updates here. You got leather, got this, uh, I don't know, suede. The buttons are a little better. This is better. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty keen to get this onto the rig and test this out. And um, I'm gonna have this review out, hopefully in a matter of days. So uh, yeah, that'll be pretty good. Uh, let's see. <laughs> people, people, say, people saying that I, that I stole it. Oh man, I always love the, are you gay comments? Those are funny. No, I got married. I got a beard. <laughs> Oh man, the internet, it's funny. I don't get I don't get too caught up in uh in those type of things. Let's see. Uh so yeah, that is the Fnatic CSL wheel for the PlayStation 4. Um a lot of comments on why it's not coming to North America and it's it's hard to say. I, I Fnatic's going to be at E3 next week. I'm hoping to go and catch up with those guys and talk to them. Um, I, my theory on it is that Sony is kind of an odd company to work with. I've I've chat with others, and um, it's wait wait well, wait. Well, let me back up. Sorry, sorry, reading chat. Um, like I've chatted with other people, such as like Jordan Greer. He's he's he works. Uh, he owns GT Planet, and hoping to catch up next week with Jordan. And we've had this conversation with. I had this conversation with him last at E3. Sony's a big company, so it's kind of like 
it's they have Japan, they have North America, they have Europe. Um, it's very fragmented. So I'm kind of curious if maybe Fnatic was able to go and strike a deal with Europe, and then maybe Sony Australia kind of jumped on board as well. And now they got to figure out how to deal with the North America reps, or maybe the the you know at home reps in Japan. So um, yeah, kind of kind of hoping to chat with them about that and get a little more insight on why this is the case right now where it's only available in Europe and Australia. So, um, but no, I think it's, um, so far it looks like a, a pretty neat product. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Wim, for cleaning up chat. Um, so there you go. Let's go ahead and move off that subject and let's talk about the other Fnatic news. Um, this week there was a blog story from, um, from Fnatic, from Thomas, uh, the owner of Fnatic, and pretty much he just gave some more details that on a direct drive wheel they're working on. And by details, it was pretty much just an official confirmation that they are having that they are making a direct drive wheel. They've Thomas has gone and pretty much said they are in like iRacing forums and um, kind of other random forums here and there. So this was the first official blog post from Fnatic.com. Uh, saying that yes, they are working on a direct drive wheel. Um, details right here, besides that, are you know kind of vague. They're saying that the new that the direct drive wheel uh, will work with their current rims that they offer, which is all very good. Um, you know, it's going to be obviously PC and it sh should have no issues working on Xbox One, PlayStation Four. Sounds like that's going to be a little more work since. Um, them working on getting back into the, I guess, good graces of PlayStation. Um, so they have that, uh, and then software, you got the software packages, dates, hoping to launch in Q4 of 2017, which, to be fair, Q4 2017 isn't very far away. Looking for beta testers, um, and uh, let's see. And then pricing, essentially the pricing is it's not going to be inexpensive. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's going to be... Yeah, I mean, which, which makes sense. I mean, they, like I said, they, there was no... Didn't give any price range, but essentially it's going to be obviously more expensive than the CSW uh, version 2.5, which uh, the wheel base of... The CSW 2.5 is $500 now, I believe, in the U.S., if someone in chat knows that, uh, that off, top the, off the top of their head, uh, let me know. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I expect this, we this struct drive wheel from Fnatic to be up around that thousand dollar price range, and maybe even north of it. But um, until we see it, we'll just have to wait and see. But um, like I said, Q4 2017, that is fast approaching. They gotta be well into development now, and. Uh, they definitely getting into that phase where they need testers to go and try everything out. And then hopefully, um, the catch-22 with testers is you need them to help you out. Then you also need them not to leak any information. I remember when the CSL Elite uh, came out last fall, or almost late summer, uh, they had a leaked image of it pop up uh, somewhere online. And I think they had, talking to them, I think they had to go and um, uh, fire that beta tester. So, um, yeah, we will see... Uh, we will see how that direct drive uh, wheel turns out, but there you go. My favorite conversation in sim racing, direct drive wheels. And by favorite, I mean it's one of the most annoying in my opinion because everyone has um, a very strong opinion, and mostly their very strong opinion is pro whatever wheel they, they own because it's a big investment. People don't like to be wrong with their investments. So, um, yeah, I always find direct drive wheel conversation very frustrating uh, and also that it's always, it, be, it does become into a, a big pissing match about who's wheel stronger, which um, outside of the only car I think off the top of my head that matters in wheel strength is maybe like an Indy car. Everything else out there in racing, you know, you don't, you don't need to be, bol your muscles bulging trying to drive it. You know, most cars have uh, um, power steering. Um, I think the whole which wheel is stronger conversation is really dumb. But um, anyway... Later this year, we'll, we'll, add, we'll add another wheel to that conversation. Um, 
which I'm looking forward to that because hopefully we'll be able to get our, our hands on that and try that out since the only wheel I've had in my hands for ex uh, truck drive wheel I've had in my hands for extended period of time is the Sim Experience AccuForce. Um, I'm getting a V2 AccuForce uh, that's going to be showing up here probably after I get back from E3. So we should be doing a review on that sometime pretty soon. I'm excited for that wheel because that wheel is going to be um, much cheaper in price. The price range for that's pretty impressive. So, um, <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, direct drive life. I hope I didn't offend you. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, let's see. Seeing people talk. Um, let me catch up here on chat here. What you guys are saying about the wheel and stuff. So I'm saying it's not a direct drive wheel. Uh, yeah, and Wim, Wim jumps in. Torque is the least important feature of my direct drive wheel. I really, I think it comes down to smoothness. I mean, that, that that's... That's my opinion on it, but um, yeah, so, uh, but it was like getting it, yeah, gonna, gonna have the V2 version of the AccuForce in here soon, hopefully we'll get the Direct Drive uh, Fanatic wheel, and then, one of these days, I hope someone sends us an OSW, um, I've only been able to try out an OSW for like, you know, quickly at iRace for life, um, I tried out a Bodner at the PRI show in Indianapolis in December, that one felt good, um, so yeah, I, I'm hoping someday we can get some other truck drive wheels in here because it's everyone wants it. People, you guys want us to uh, uh, compare and contrast them, and it's you know you got to be able to have them in your hands for an extended period of time. You can't have it for like five minutes and, and formulate an opinion uh, if it's the best wheel ever or not. So um, hope we get some more truck drive wheels in here so I can compare them and I can have more rants about how dumb I think the argument about them is. Uh. Okay, let's see. Good, good, good. Yes, I believe direct. I, I direct drive life. I, uh, I agree. Immediacy, response, smoothness. Yes, all that good stuff. Um, okay, so let's roll off the fanatic topics again. I have the CSL for PlayStation Four available in Europe and Australia, not here in the states. Um, gonna be getting this out review out soon. This this rim is so much lighter than the P1 rim, going from rubber to leather and suede so much lighter so i'm pretty excited about that uh let's see next up let's roll over to back to the software side project cars 2 has announced um that porsche is coming to the game which isn't too surprising because we've heard other unofficial confirmations of that they put out a uh a really nice video here that i'm not going to click on it's like four and a half minutes but it features patrick long uh, U.S. Porsche factory driver, uh, a badass, who talks about his experience with Porsche and that shows off some of the new cars. Um, there's been some images that were released uh, today. We didn't have it up on the website yet. Uh, here's a rundown of the cars that were seen in that video. And um, as you see, it's a, it's a pretty nice list. I think the p images they showed today showed a 911... Um, Okay, it was the 911, it was the GT3 2016 that they showed today in the image. Um, so, yeah, that is exciting that, um, I mean, as we talked about when Porsche was announced in Assetto Corsa, um, and then, and it, with Assetto Corsa, it was kind of like, is this a unique deal, or is this the floodgates opening? And then when iRacing announced that they were getting the, um, uh, the cup car back in January, that's when I was like, okay, here we go. Porsche is coming to all the titles, uh, since obviously this isn't exclusive. This is them opening up their licensing. So um, Project Cars 2 is getting it. Uh, Project Cars 2 has a lot of very cool looking cars. So um, they've done a really nice job from what I've seen so far on their licensing side. Um, I haven't been able to drive it yet. There's been opportunities to drive it at different locations, but unfortunately here in Ohio, I'm not near... Uh, I think they had a drive in LA and they've had some over in Europe. So, um, yes, next week when I'm at E3 in LA, um, Project Cars 2 will be there. I already have my time set up to go and drive and talk to the developers. Uh, maybe do some interviews. Went and bought a, bought a mic today to, uh, microphone to go and interview people with. And normally we don't like to do too many interviews, um, because we've learned in the past that you guys don't really watch interviews. You'd rather just hear what our opinions are on uh, what we what we drive and different games coming up. Um, but I do have some questions that I really want to get answered. Maybe we'll package them all into Beyond the Gloves, where we just have a bunch of snippets of people we interviewed at E3. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Either way, we'll, 
we'll figure it out. But I'm excited to try Project Cars 2 because I've been pretty hyped about it after um, not loving Project Cars 1. Um, so everything I've seen so far looks awesome. Now I just got to drive it and see what it feels like. Okay. Um, need a drink of water because I'm dying. Uh, da, 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 da. Someone's saying, Case Lay 1 saw a few photos today showing the release date of Project Cars 2 to be September 22nd. Um, I'd be very impressed if it was that early, because they said, I, I think the original announcement when they announced the game, I think they said uh, they were shooting for September, and then it quickly became, but it was, it was like shooting for September, but we're going to stay late 2017, you know, give us until maybe like that Christmas holiday. I, if I had a guess, I would guess it'd be closer to um, Christmas time, if I had a guess. Just how things slide, and also I think I feel like that'd probably be a better time of year to go during the holiday season because um, I think it's gonna be a really big game. But I don't know, you know, maybe if they can get it out sooner or better. And also, it, it also kind of depends where GT Sport falls. Even though I think Project Cars Two is gonna give GT Sport a uh, a strong run for its money. Um, so and GT Sport Two, I also have um. Someone, someone met, mentioned Kaz in chat. Um, I will be seeing Kaz again, just like I saw him last year, and um, hopefully we'll be talking about more of a finished uh, GT Sport than just, uh, hey, look, here it is, which was a little bit how it was last year. It was kind of like, hey, this is what we have done. Look look at photos. Ugh. <laughs> I sat through it. He, he gave a long presentation um, to a small group of us, and it was a lot of it was on photos. And I was kind of like, photo mode's cool. But I'm a little more inclined to the driving part. Um, so let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Catching up on chat. <laughs> okay, cool. You guys, you guys chatting about uh, Project Cars 2 and GT Sport. That will be a fascinating face-off on the PlayStation. Uh, once they both come out, I'm really curious to see what sales are like on the PS4 for both those titles. Um, if I had to guess, I still expect uh, GT Sport to sell more copies than Project Cars 2 just because of the brand name that is GT and PlayStation. Um, you know, it'll probably sell like hotcakes in Japan. Um, so I think by default, um, GT Sport will win. But I'm curious to see if Project Cars 2 can come close to competing with GT Sport in PS4 sales. I think there's a chance. Okay. Um... Let's move off that subject and head back over to PC only. Uh, iRacing announced on Saturday, I believe, that the um, the Volkswagen Beetle GRC is coming this fall. Uh, I believe it was promised for season four, um, and it will be free. So GRC Global Rally Cross. As you see in type here, these cars are nuts. 544 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 2.1 seconds. Uh, the video here, which is another nice video, but it has talking, so I don't want to play it. Um, actually features Scott Speed in there, former F1 driver, in, uh, former F1 driver, NASCAR driver. He turned uh, like three practice laps at Indianapolis one year for the 500, and now he's uh, doing the rally cross. He's avid iRacer. racer. He's on there a lot, and he's helping out with the car. Um, I know Billy's already been contacted about helping out with the car with his dirt knowledge, but uh, yeah, these cars are really badass. Um, and yeah, the video was, I was saying it has a great shot of Dave Kemmer, the CEO of iRacing, in the car in the passenger seat, and Speed launches it, and it's just like, oh, those cars really go. So um, that's really cool to see. The interesting thing is they, when they announced Dirt back April first of 2016. They also showed that they were scanning the uh, the Ford Fiesta uh, rallycross car, and uh, so it'll be interesting to see if the rally, if the Fiesta they're making you pay for, or if that's going to be free as well with the Volkswagen. Because I mean, if the Volkswagen's free, then I see a lot of people just go on that route. Um, me being a VW owner, owning a GTI, uh, I think I might lean a little more towards the Beetle myself. Um, also, I just find it so funny that a Beetle goes that fast so um <laughs> thank you tom jones i don't worry tom i know you're my number one fan <laughs> there's there there's no doubt um so yeah no that's gonna be um 
That's gonna be neat, and also it's gonna be really interesting is what they're gonna do on the track side. Uh, the rumor was back in the day that they were just gonna modify uh, current racetracks and throw dirt on them and make courses, and we'll see if they uh, keep to that. I believe um, the event they went to over the weekend, I know Steve Myers was there, and I think it was at Thompson Speedway, uh, which is a short track that they have in the game. And I believe I, saw, I just caught some footage of it, like they were racing through the infield at Thompson, then going across the track, out of the track, and maybe back in. So, um, you know, if they're doing that, then that sets up perfectly for iRacing, who already has a track in the surrounding area scanned. And I just got to go and lay down some dirt and put some jumps in. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to be um, that's gonna be neat. It'll be interesting to see what they do on a uh, number of tracks. Especially, especially coming off uh, with Dirt 4 coming out and the number of uh, tracks they have. A little more on that later. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yes, well, I mean, st Stalker does equal fans. I mean, it's, it's, it's a fine line between Stalker and fan. I'm going to assume you a fan, and then I'm not going to hand out my address. <laughs> uh... Okay, how are we doing? 30 minutes. I mostly still have a voice. I think we can keep on rolling. Um, <laughs> oh man, chat's funny. Uh, elsewhere in iRacing news, there was a little thing called the Season 3 build put out. And uh, had new GTE cars, even though... Had new GTE cars and then a new short track, which I'm actually drawing a blank on which short track that was. But uh, hopefully you guys saw our two first looks of the Ford GT and the Ferrari 4888 GTE. Um, there is both of them looking pretty. Um, kind of lucked out where, um, and again, I'd like to thank iRacing, let us have exclusive first look at the cars. Um, they got approved like super late. I think they got approved by both manufacturers on Friday. So, um, which... If they were approved after Friday, I don't think we would have had a chance to go and, and do those videos because, I mean, it just takes a little bit of setup time. Um, and I also want to do a good job. don't want to rush something. So um, I was thankful for that time. Um, I, was, well, I was also thankful, thankful for the time because then YouTube went and killed my first upload of the Ferrari video and I had, or the Ford video, and I had people in the forums just uh, losing their mind waiting for the videos to come out. So uh, besides the new cars... Um, uh, some more tire updates. Now they do have it where you have a a quote unquote flat spot on the wheel. Where if you do flat spot the, the tire instead of the whole tire heating up, only that patch does. So that's good. Been some shadow updates, some now night shadows, and some reflections off that. Um, and then a lot of smaller things. I'm trying to think what was else was a, a big update from this build. Um, Really, the showstoppers were the the GTE cars, and then that update to the tire, the way it the way it heats up and flat spots. Oh, that's what I was forgetting. Um, there's also new um, what are they called? Not overlays in uh what I, I use them in the video where you can go and uh, make, make do all sorts of uh, oh filters. That's the word. God, drawing a blank. So. Uh, yeah, there's now filters, so you can do that in the replays and make things look all fun. There's a really cool video that I almost reached out to the person who made it today to show it on the show here, where there's an 8-bit mode, and he went and he was racing, yes, and I racing, uh, the Ford and the Ferrari in 8-bit, and had, this, had the old sound soundtrack from the old racing games. Anytime you pass someone, it would go and make a little bloop sound. It was, uh, it was fantastic. So, um... Yeah, that's uh, that was cool. But yeah, so those are kind of fun to play with. Um, I don't know how much you're going to use them overall. It's kind of like like a set of course has filters, and I've always just turned them off because I didn't really care for them. The iRacing ones, I played around with them with the, with the videos, but I don't know how much I'm going to play around with them after that. So um, yeah, I already I see a, a hashtag Team Ferrari. What's what's everyone take? Who's who's Ferrari? Who's Ford? Um, I'm curious. I'm I'm really split on both cars. Um, I think maybe I lean towards the Ferrari, I think, but man, they're, they're both really cool cars, and I think um, they have the, the 24 Hours of Le Mans this weekend for iRacing on Saturday. Um, I think it's going to be like two-thirds uh, GTE cars out there, <laughs> unless I'm underestimating how many people want to go and jump into the prototype, but we drove that prototype last year, and that car is still, um, it's still tough. It's still, the tire models aren't quite where some of the newer cars at on that one. So that one is, uh, 
That one's easy to, to get away from you. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, people are... Oh, someone's hanging out in my curtains in the background. <laughs> oh, that's funny. See, that that's a funny thing. I see Ronnie put in here. He wants the C7R. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be cool to see. Uh, one thing I saw someone brought up a point, though, is that something like maybe the C7R is going to get faded out because uh, Corvettes, devel they're developing a mid-engine Corvette. And unlike the past 30 years where every uh, you know car magazine, at least here in the States, has talked about, they're coming out with a mid-engine Corvette and it never happens. It actually sounds like now it's going to happen. It's going to be like a $100,000 Corvette. Um, and I think they're going to go and take that car and go race that. That's going to become their new uh, GTE car. So... Um, uh, the, the, the comment that that person was making was like, no, don't come out with the C7R if they're going to replace it right away. And I totally agree with that. Um, I just, yeah, I don't think that's a very good plan if it's going to get replaced right away. So, um, yeah, I think, but the Ferrari and the Ford, them both being new cars last year, they should be around for a little while. So I think that was a good move by them. <laughs> yes. Uh... <laughs> That'd be crazy and wise. Billy was fired. He exceeded the maximum allowed number of sprint card t-shirts. Oh my god. That is so funny. Um, I mean, I agree. I mean, that. I mean, he, he has a lot of sprint card t-shirts. I mean, if there's any one reason to fire him, it has to be the t-shirts. <laughs> uh, he gives me so much uh, t-shirt envy. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, speech, I saw... Truck Drive Life mentioned Netflix. That made me think, um, I think on Amazon this week, they're launching the 24-hour Le Mans documentary. I think followed last year's race. I believe that's coming up this weekend. Or maybe it's not until getting closer to the actual race weekend the following week. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing that. That could be, uh, that looks pretty neat. Now, if I could just watch it on my 4K TV. I got a Google TV and Google and Amazon it won't play nice with one another. So I have to go with like a Roku box to play Amazon Prime on my nice TV. So annoying. All these companies that want to go and, uh, again, pissing matches with one another. Um, <laughs> I don't envy Billy's t-shirts. I envy his coffee mugs. <laughs> okay. Um, let's move off of the iRacing stuff. Um, I'm curious to see how many of you guys are running the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Uh, I would like to, but it's just not possible. I, I'm going to try to get this Fanatic video out. Um, I'll get to some more videos here in a little bit to get out. And then, and then E3. When I get back from E3, it's like I lock myself here in the studio. I don't talk to the family for at least a week, and I just edit. It's just editing, Red Bulls. I mean, it's just awful. Um... But that's just kind of how it is. I don't have like a, a laptop that I can edit on the fly there at, at E3. Um, let's see. Next up. Uh, oh, okay. So, uh, Dirt 4. Like I mentioned, uh, and hopefully you've seen, we've had, some, um, we've had some Dirt 4 content coming out. Billy has put out three videos, and, he gave, and I uploaded a fourth one from him just this afternoon that um, we're going to release sometime. Maybe tomorrow morning, what I'm thinking. Um, but anyway, uh, the latest one we did here that featured the three different Land Rush uh, locations. And it featured, um, excuse me, uh, it also featured a giveaway that we are doing. We are going and we are giving away three copies of Dirt 4, one on each platform. Uh, you can apply over here. Well, actually, if I go back up here, uh, there's the click here that takes you over to our forums where we've had... 208 people, or at least we've had 208 posts, and hopefully, I, I think there are about over 200 people now that have gone and said that they want to win Dirt 4. So um, if you haven't done so yet, head over to our forums. You know, there's the rules. You just got to go and sign up at the ISRTV forums, comment in that uh, forum post, and let me know what platform you would like to have it on. And then on Friday... I will go and uh, random number generate and go and pick out three winners. Um, and then if you don't win, one thing of note that I haven't mentioned yet, we actually have nine different copies of Dirt 4, three, three, and three on each platform. Um, so we're going to be give, doing some more giveaways. Uh, we're, we're hoping to do a review on it, 
but um, I don't know when that review is coming. I was, I was shooting for that to be um, to be out on Friday, but we'll see. Um, something that da, 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 uh, oh, yeah, uh, I'm getting distracted. Um, something that's interesting that I didn't realize until yesterday. I didn't realize Dirt Four was released on the consoles in North America yesterday but isn't being released on the consoles and then Steam Worldwide until Friday. That is really odd. I, I We kept on getting... Uh, I knew the review embargo date was last night, uh, or was like Tuesday at midnight Pacific time we could release a review. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so odd to see the game kind of broken up, and then also the U.S. to get something before Europe is like um, odd, and then for it to only be on the consoles. So... Um, yeah, that's uh, that was kind of fascinating. I had to go and and, and reconfirm that with uh, the rep the rep that I've been working with for the game. It's like, is that right? It's coming out on the console in North America on a Tuesday. Okay, interesting. Um, maybe Tuesday is more of a more of a, a release day. So um, okay. So since I'm I'm hearing it here in chat, uh, let's see. A couple things. Wayne, Wayne, will you have a, a vlog, John, at E3? Hope so. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do a vlog. I've thought about it. I thought about maybe going and do. I would really love to do a day, a day report, and then post it that night. But I don't think that's gonna be. Um, I don't think that's gonna be possible. Um, okay. Dirt four. So I haven't played it too much to be honest. Uh, I was working mostly on the iRacing racing videos over the weekend. Um, and that took up a fair amount of time. Um, I have dabbled in it. Uh, dabbled in it. Um, it. Me and Dirt 4 kind of got off on the wrong foot. On the PC. Um, on the PC, on my triples, it was clear right away. There's no triple screen support. Which, to be fair, I wasn't really expecting based off the conversation I had uh, with the Dirt rep in... Um, in San Francisco back in the springtime. So, um, no triple screen, no VR, which we knew, we knew that too, because we had, we had talked, uh, when we, when we, uh, chatted with, uh, Paul Coleman, uh, on Beyond the Gloves, he made it pretty clear that VR, they might do VR down the line, but it wasn't going to be coming at launch. Um, so, yeah, and driving the game in triples with it being stretched like that, it's just, it just looks awful. It looks awful. Um, it wasn't running great, even for it not even for it only doing a single render and stretching. It wasn't running great. Now, um, the PC version we have isn't the final version of the game. Um, there's going to be a day one patch uh, on Friday that's going to help kind of clean up some graphic stuff. Um, it sounds more like with rain and things I didn't experience, but anyway, so I can't fully comment on that yet. Uh, even though we are now allowed to review it based on this current build, uh, since there was, I guess, I think they were trying to get that update out yesterday and they just didn't get it out in time. Um, so yeah, um, it's just really hard to play a game that's not triple screen supported like that. And then also what's weird is I watched Billy's videos and I saw people commenting on this. It really looked like they took the 19, uh, 1920 by 1080 and stretched it from ne to the to the 21 by 9 because uh, he has the same monitor as I do, that's 2560 by 1080 and it does look stretched. It looks stretched in the mirror. He didn't necessarily notice it right away, um, was going to look into it more, but it's like if that's the case, that's strange because I don't think Dirt Rally did that. I think Dirt Rally could at least, if I ran it in single screen, it was properly filling out uh, the 21 by 9 aspect ratio, not taking the uh, 16 by 9 and stretching it. But that's what it appeared like, so that was kind of odd. Um, but um, beyond that, the keyboard works properly, so that's exciting. Um, and then driving-wise, uh, I haven't been happy so far, but I think I need to go in and adjust my wheel. I feel like out of the box, the wheel settings of TSPC Racer just, it's felt a little odd. Uh, Sounds like Billy, on the other hand, I think he's driving it. I don't think he's having any issues with uh, with that. To be fair, the video that, that we have right now that isn't live yet is Billy's impressions of the game. Um, I'm kind of letting him take the lead on that since he's been playing it. Um, so we'll see a little more what he has to say. Because like I said, I just haven't had too much time into it yet. Um, 
Yeah, and like Wim said, console game developed on the PC, so no triple support is not a surprise. That's the weird thing. I I, I, I haven't answered this question yet. Uh, the other day I was like, this feels kind of console porty. But then again, I was chatting with Bill, and he's like, well, the keyboard works and all this other stuff. Um, one thing that's a shame for the, for the PC side is, unlike Dirt Rally, there's no uh, graphics test to run. Uh, where you can go and do whatever I don't know what it was called, but you can go and it would it would it would do it would do the graphics run and show you your frame rate at the end. Um, that doesn't exist, so that'd be nice if that was there because I always really liked uh, liked having that. Um, so yeah, that wasn't there. Um, yeah, uh, so I haven't really had too much a chance to try out your your stage much more. Um, so I need I need to do that, but. Um, Da, da, da. The guys just don't. It's buff. <laughs> yeah, graf graphical benchmark. That's what I was looking for. Is the show running fine? Okay, people are just being silly. I have no, dro I have no drop frames on my end. So, um, yeah. So we will, we will see. I need to spend more time with Dirt Rally. Um, I'm hoping your stage is going to be the thing that really, um, really kind of pushes it in the right direction for me. Um, I think I'm gonna go and maybe I might just go and run it on the PlayStation 4. I'm gonna run it on the PlayStation 4, or I'm gonna go and disconnect my side monitors because um, that's just so annoying. Um, another thing I want to check out is I'm a little concerned about the difficulty level of the AI. Uh, Billy seemed to beat him up pretty easily in those races, and a little bit of racing I've done, they haven't seemed to be the most challenging. So um, I'm I'm a little concerned about that. And then also just a little concerned about them always being five rally course tracks. I'm, I'm hoping in the future they uh, do more DLC. So um, yeah, there we go. Uh, that's probably me spoiling the review. But uh, I need to spend more time with. Like I said, too bad Billy isn't here. I'm sure he would spend about 45 minutes uh, talking you guys ears off about it. <laughs> I wish he was here in chat. It's it's a lot more fun to give him shit when he's actually here. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll have uh, we'll put out those impressions by Billy uh, here soon, and it's a little more of an impression video because unlike all these other um, I don't know gaming outlets or even individuals who like to go and like rush out a review to get views, um, we like to play it for a bit. Not that we haven't rushed reviews, you know. I did day one reviews last year, and I that was a, a rush getting them out, but I spent a lot of time driving it. This time around, I was just like. I wanted to get a review out quickly, but I just didn't have time to drive it, and I didn't want to just go and, and make shit up like other people do. So, um, these places like IGN, I don't know how they pump out these, they pump out these five minute reviews playing the game for like five minutes, it's ridiculous. So, um, yeah, we shall see. Um, <laughs> Tom Jones, maybe they can do triple support DLC. You know, it'd be nice if it was updated later. Like I, I understand. I understand that triple screen and VR is a small percentage of the market, but man, it's 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 the market that will buy your game, and it's frustrating when it doesn't work. Um, and I don't know why. It just looks extra terrible here. I mean, you know, it's not like this is the first title to not have triple screen support, and normally you just kind of grit your teeth and and go with it. But um, it did not look good for me. So single screen looks great. Everything I've seen of uh, videos looks great um it looked great on the PS ps4 when i tested it in the springtime so um yep there we go uh let's see da, 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 da. um <laughs> ign are paid reviews well that, that's too <laughs> happy crazy wise darren was fired too he gets hurt too much <laughs> oh that's funny that, that that is good um Let's see, uh, so that was Dirt 4 giveaway. Uh, oh, by the way, we're in Happenings. I didn't even know we crossed over. Uh, next up, um, iRacing. We are announcing new subscription winners. So part of those videos that we did on the 4GT and Ferrari 488GTE cars, um, we did a giveaway. Uh, both videos had two one-year subscriptions and four three-year subscriptions um, individually. So let's go ahead and show off those winners who I haven't contacted yet. Okay, so the winners uh, from the Ferrari video, one year winners, uh, new subscription winners from iRacing, Andy Wheeler and Dozer. 
Three Month, Blair Witch, Mitchell 944, Gerald M, Kidney Pinto, and then winners from the Ford video. Uh, one year subscription to Ve- Ve- Vetos. We'll go with that. Uh, and Jow Jow Rabbit. And then three month subscriptions to Spoonmeister, Tina Jennifer, Marcus Lindblom, and Terrar21. So um, there you go. I will be contacting you individuals via PM in our forums and uh, giving you those codes to the new iRacing subscription. So congratulations. <laughs> Golf claps around for everyone. Um, so uh, yeah, and hopefully, and by the way, uh, and I'll reiterate this in the PMs, those are for new subscriptions only. I feel like there's some people that, that um, uh, entered the contest, the giveaway, and they were like, oh, great, I can read this. I, I'm about to run out of my sub on iRacing. Um, it doesn't work like that. Once you've created a subscription, you can't go and use a new subscription code. These are for people who have never raced on iRacing. Or if you want to use a different email, which that's on you. I guess if you, used, if you, used, you signed up once and you never bought any content, then, you know, no foul. Um, but anyway. So um, there we go. Oh, sweet. Daniel Jensen, you win? Were you, were you on the list? And... Hey, I don't see you on the list. Unless you're someone else. Oh, who, who are you in the forums? That's that's right. At least I, I feel like people... I'm dumb. I'm like, everyone uses the same name on everything on the internet. Duh. So, um... <laughs> I want a subscription to Field and Stream. There you go. Um, uh, let's see. So, yes, congratulations to those winners. Uh, I still have... A fair number more iRacing subscriptions to give away, uh, new user subscriptions. So, uh, I think anytime we do an iRacing video going forward, there's probably a good chance we're going to do a giveaway. So, if you've never been on iRacing, um, there's a decent chance that you can win. Um, and then we'll see how many people win the the dirt. Well, well, anyway, I can't believe we've had over 200 people go and enter for that Dirt Four giveaway, and most of those are new forum members. So I'm glad we're getting people to uh, sign up. There you go, Daniel. Thank you for congratulations for winning. Um, happy, crazy, and wise. You cannot have a four-year subscription. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Nice. Um, next topic. Um, we have gone and yesterday. Uh, Darren, after a long time of me not knowing how to mess with the forums, Darren taught me how to actually uh, change things around. So we've done some work on cleaning up the forums and um, just adding new sections. Like we added a Dirt 4 section to the forums, added a Project Cars 2 section to the forums. Um, now Race Room is its own thing, um, even though that should be Race Room, not Race Room Racing Experience. Um, so uh, yeah, doing some some cleanup on the forums. We still have a way to go. Obviously, we don't even have... Uh, Forza Horizon 2 or 3 in there. Whoops. Uh, we'll work on getting Forza Motorsport 7 in there. Um, if it is coming. So, anyway, just wanted to let you know that uh, we always mention in the end of videos, our forums are a really great place, a really great resource. And there is a lot of fantastic conversation in here, uh, especially on the hardware side and custom stuff in our forums. So, um, you should come sign up. I'm going to be working on making them slightly less uh, dated. Okay, a lot less dated and slightly less confusing. So, those are the goals I'm going for. Super driver, you've been noticed. Now get out of here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, here's a good question. Mracer001. Why does the ISR forums default me to a foreign language every time? It is the only forum that does this, even though I select English every time. I don't know. Let me go and... Uh, Hit me up at uh, john at insidesimracing.tv uh, email and um, let me know what your username is. Let me see if there's something in the settings for that. Um, once in a while the forum says weird thing. Like we, we had some things yesterday where we had a ton of people sign up and some people never got notification emails and I had to go in and manually approve them on the forum. So um, I'm not saying it's perfect, but um, it's not a bad place to be. For the most part, it works. <laughs> uh, oh, another foreign language one. Okay, well, I'll put it on my to-do list of things to look at why it's doing that. I'm not, I'm not sure. I've never had that issue. Does it do it for everyone? 
I love on the live show we find out the forums are terrible at uh, making everyone go in a forum lang a foreign language. So, um... Okay, well, I'll just look at it for everyone then. Anyway, moving on. On the to-do list. Let me... Remind me next time we have a live show. Um... Also coming up, uh, tomorrow we are releasing our extensive review for the Next Level Racing F1 GT uh, Simulator. Uh, I filmed this like last week and was shooting to get it out over the weekend, but um, software stuff happened. So, uh, <laughs> comments. So anyway, um, I have more or less finished editing that video and we'll be putting it up tomorrow. Um, I'm really looking forward to see what you guys think of this F1 GT review. Uh, it has a little length to it. I think it's over 30 minutes, but I went really in depth. Um, try to cover everything that someone who's looking to buy a simulator would like to know. So um, I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's gonna, I think it's a, a pretty good one. Um, besides, ignore the TV in it. I, I shot in a different place with the TV that I set up for kind of like the console setup. And the damn things like vibrating on color on camera so um ugh, i hate tvs they're so dumb i mentioned in the video but uh anyway i have to fix that for future times um we had that once in at, at darren's place and it was the backlight uh, had to be turned off to eliminate that but i did that here and it still was vibrating on camera so um i don't know maybe i can't have that tv on on camera but okay we will, uh, but that review will be coming out tomorrow, and um, yeah, I think that's gonna be a good one. Um, catching, catching up on comments. Uh, people, some people are saying it works fine for you, and it doesn't work fine for others. Okay. <laughs> uh, is oh Tom Jones? Okay, is Indy my dog in the video? Yes, she is in the video. So. Stick around to the end. There is an indie sighting in the F1 GT review. <laughs> uh, how's it to talk to yourself? It's it is odd. Um, okay, and then uh, also coming up later this week, we're, we're gonna do an E3 preview. Uh, gonna have that hopefully on Beyond the Gloves returning this Sunday. Kind of when uh, shit hit the fan, and I had my my, my mom passed away, and then I got married, then I went to Italy for my honeymoon. Um, we kind of stopped doing the Beyond the Gloves. Uh, I think we're at episode 8. So going to go and try to pick that back up um, this week. And I think an E3 preview will be pretty good. So going to do that. Um, and then... One couple more things before we get to q and I don't know if you guys saw this. But... This... Is the 2018 IndyCar. And this thing looks awesome. And I want to beg and plead, as the doorbell rings, if any sim racing developers are watching this, I want this car. Can we have this car? So, um, man, this thing just looks so good. I mean, look at this thing. I'm just going to go over to the road course, road course kit here in a second. This is such a sexy car. I love Indy cars so much. I'm glad they're finally getting rid of that dumb uh, airbox above the driver's head. The wings look great. I can't wait. So, um, yes, this is my open plead to developers to make this car. Because this thing looks so cool. Ugh. There you go. I had I had had to add that in here today, because that just looks amazing. There you go. Oh, Wim, I did see the Aussie Formula Five Thousand car. That is wild. If you guys haven't seen that, they've gone and I've never really heard of this Aussie Formula Five Thousand series. They have a new car that looks like a 1970s F1 car. I mean, the, the giant air. See, I'm okay with the giant airbox there. It's just not okay in an Indy car. Um, the low, the low nose, uh, it looks really awesome. You guys should definitely go and look that up. So, um, yeah, that looks, that looks pretty sweet. Um, Slowbloke mentioned full IndyCar roster in Project Cars 2, John. You are correct. They are releasing, um, 
That's something I forgot to, I wanted to talk about. They are releasing the full 26, 2016 Indy 500 field in Project Cars 2. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a step in the right direction. Uh, I'm excited to see that. I'm hoping I can drive it at E3. That'd be really cool. Um, but this is going to be the 28... I, I want that new 2018 car. So that's the only thing that kind of sucks is Project Cars 2 is going to come out after the IndyCar season ends. And then that body kit you see in that game is going to be obsolete. Um, kind of obsolete. I guess you won't be obsolete technically until March when they start the 2018 season. But um, yeah, no, that's really cool that Project Cars 2 has IndyCars coming. Um, interested to see how that thing uh, drives, especially on the oval. Um, yeah, because I, yeah, so we, we, we shall see. I'm pretty sure I drove, I'm pretty sure I've driven the, the, the Indy car in Project Cars, and I don't think it was my favorite thing, if I recall. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I want to see someone make that 2018 body kit in Indy car, because that is awesome. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. <laughs> That was IndyCar porn. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. I'm glad everyone wants the new IndyCar like I do. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Uh, last up, I, I said I was going to review Italy. Uh, my honeymoon. I was going to put pictures on here. I ran out of time. Maybe I'll do... Nah, I probably won't do it another time. Let's be honest. Um... My review of Italy, if you can go to Italy, go to Italy. It was fantastic. Uh, go to Venice. Go to the, go to northern Italy with the mountains was beautiful. Go to Lake Como. Um, the big cities, Florence and Rome, it's worth seeing the arts. Besides that, I was kind of like, eh. Um, so, the southern, southern Italy was pretty with uh, the island of Capri, stuff like that. Uh, very easy to Hey, by the way, Italians... They actually know how to drive over there. They drive so much better than here in the U.S. On the highways, everyone stays in the right-hand lane, and then if you pass, you're in the left-hand lane. And then you get back over. And all the trucks stay in the right-hand lane. To all those people who, who made mean comments to me on the American Truck Simulator video we did back in the day, where I complained about all the shitty truckers here in the U.S. on I-70 who like to run side-by-side -side going 60 miles an hour for miles on end between where I live in Indianapolis or through the rest of I-70. So, um, take note. When there's two-lane road, truckers, they only stay in the right-hand lane in Italy, on the highways. It is amazing. So, um... <laughs> yeah, I went to Lake Como. That's it. Uh, Lake Como. It's, it's popular. Um, so yeah, people can actually drive there. Driving the cities? Awful. I had to do it. Don't do it. I, at one point, I was going the wrong way down a, a street, because it just... Directions. Google Google Maps wasn't being very good. Um, Tuscany, gorgeous as well. So um, Italy was awesome. I also had a chance to go by the Ferrari Museum, and I did drive on their simulator there. But I don't have the video yet from my wife's phone. Uh, maybe I'll have that for the next live show, and we can um, check out what that uh, what that looked like. Because that was a that was a pretty cool setup they had there with the set of course. Uh, um, I can't remember the simulator names. They're the ones that look like Formula cars, and they have a traction loss. Um, uh, definitely had something like an OSW like steering wheel, and I don't know what the brakes were, but the the, the pedals were. But the brake was like, I mean, it, it it was it was a pure pressure plate. There was like zero movement. So um, yeah, that was a uh, that was fascinating for the sense. Oh, it also had the seat belts would get tighter when you when you would brake. So um, yeah, I'll have to go and uh, have to go and show that video at some point. Um, <laughs> that's funny. So, so Hart, Hartmut said, uh, to be honest, Italians are the worst drivers in Italy. They, they do drive aggressively. They drive aggressively, especially in town. Oh my God. We had a cabbie pickups up in Naples, which by the way, Naples is like an armpit. If you can avoid Naples, avoid Naples. Um, I, we were walking across town with our stuff and I was like, don't get mugged. Don't get mugged. Don't get mugged. Um, but no, they, they drive aggressively in the cities. A lot of hor a lot of honking the horns, and like everyone's driving like a millimeter off of each other. Um, but uh, no, highway driving was easy. And my sweet, my sweet Peugeot two hundred eight, yeah. And my uh, 
Oh, what was the other one? I had a Fiat Punto. Man, five speed transmissions. Felt like I had about 50 horsepower. When I went up, we went up to, north to the mountains, I was in first gear a lot. F wide open throttle, crawling up the mountain. <laughs> it was so, um, oh man, it, it was, ugh, it was sad. So many, there are so many German cars, also by the way, in Italy. On the highway, it was like, Audi wagon, Audi wagon, Audi wagon, Audi wagon, BMW wagon, Audi wagon. Everyone drives Audis, and they were just flying by in a left-hand lane. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, that, that was, that was odd. I was like, not that many Italian cars. <laughs> so, nope, it was, uh, Italy was awesome. I definitely, I definitely suggest if you can go, uh, go there to do so. Flights are really cheap this time of year, uh, out of the U.S. right now. I guess Italy and Spain are, like, competing airlines. Um, so that turned out really well. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, Wim asking if he realized I was really close to uh, Spa. Yeah, that would have been awesome to go to. I tell you, I didn't realize at Ferrari, if you call like 48 hours in advance, you can set up, take your own car onto the test track there. I and mean, that's wild. I mean, if I would have been on top of it, I could have taken the Peugeot 208 out there, and I could have just like died in the first turn because my brakes would have failed because that car had terrible brakes. It was a terrible car. <laughs> I have, I have nothing nice to say about it. I was so happy to get home and get back to my GTI. I mean, I only have it only has 200 horsepower, but it just felt like a night and day difference. Uh, <laughs> I have owned a Fiat Punto. I feel your pain. You know, the Punto was better than the 208 in my opinion. Like, I actually preferred it more. Um, <laughs> it's... Okay... Wayne, I know you guys don't say Peugeot over there in the UK, but everywhere else it says they say Peugeot. I, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> yes, Italian cars, I guess they do fall to bits. Fix it again, Tony. Okay, uh, that's enough of me talking about myself. Um, we still got some of you guys hanging around. I want to go and open up to Q and A. Uh, we can do Q and A for about I don't know. I say about 20 minutes until my voice gives out, which. We're, we're getting there. So uh, if you have questions, put it up here. I'll try to catch on the fly because I can't grab the questions like usual. So, yeah. <laughs> A fiat worse than death. <laughs> How do you say Peugeot in England? I thought it would... I don't know. We had, we had this one time. We need, again, we need Billy here. Because Billy caught health, caught flack for it um, on, uh, oh, it, it, it's, it's Peugeot. Yeah, it's, it, it's per, per versus poo. <laughs> there we go. Man, I, I, I love, oh, Q&A, here we go. Penguins are predators. I am rooting for the predators. They've done a nice job uh, getting back into that series. I'm also rooting in, uh, in uh, U.S. sports. Uh, the Cavaliers, Cleveland, I live in Ohio, so rooting for Cleveland to like show up in one of these games and maybe win a game against Golden State, who are really good. Need LeBron to just uh, go nuts. Um, I, I saw a question earlier that people were asking when I was going to review the uh, CSL Elite PlayStation 4 wheel from Fnatic. Um, I am shooting on getting this out before I head to E3. I head to E3 on Sunday. So, um, yeah, that will be uh, that will be soon. I probably want to get done with the show today. I'm going to go and do all the post stuff I use for getting um, getting the show up on um, podcast form. And then I'm going to finish up that F1 GT and render that. And then we'll be rolling on this. Um, John Ulmer, uh, I will not be running Le Mans. Uh, I'm just too busy, and, and again, my flight leaves Sunday morning, like early Sunday. I gotta, so I gotta, I gotta kind of run out of here. Um, Want to upgrade my sim? CSL Elite or Close Sport 2.5 pedals? Um, I would go. I was. I go to the Close Sport V3s. Uh, I take the CSL Elite LC over the uh, ver version two of the Close Sport pedals. So the low, I, you gotta get the load cell on on the uh, CSL pedals. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, in all seriousness, Carcraft dead. Okay, this is great. Um, someone 
hit me up last week on Twitter. Let me go and pull this up. Um, I'm not going to show it here on the screen. Um, oh, I don't know if I can find it. Oh, here it is. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to find it. We get too many notifications on Twitter. Anyway, um, someone said they reached out to Carcraft, like what's going on, and I think they said something like, um, something like it's going to get, like they're, they're, they're fi- like things are starting back up again or something, or they're still working on it, they're not ready to show anything yet because they're working on stuff. I don't know. But um, yeah, Carcraft, I don't know. It's like I don't know. It's it's kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> even HD Ohio has gloom. Yeah. Um, let's see. Happy, crazy, and wise. Have you ever done one of these broadcasts without pants? No. I'm always afraid if I have to get up, then you have to see me without pants. So, and it's it's cold here today in Ohio. It's weird. Um, uh, Cordell, uh, hey John, have you seen Need for Speed Payback? I have not. Um, I haven't, I don't know, I don't, I don't, we have so much stuff to cover that I've just kind of not worried too much about Need for Speed, um, and covering that. Uh, let's see, Steve Baxter, Q&A, should iRacing add AI as an option to offline practice mode to help the boring grind when practicing for league slash upcoming races? Um... Maybe I guess I can see that for league. I mean, I don't find it boring when you're out there for a weekly on the service because you're out there with other cars in a practice session. And a lot of times, practice sessions, um, unless I'm like trying to draft in a on a stock car, and mostly it's best for me just to be out there by myself. Um, but it is nice to see where the fast guys are running at. Um, you know, kind of get a gauge where you're at. But I don't know. I I'm a fan of no AI and, ra- and i racing. I think they got plenty of other things to work on and do. And I like that it's only online. Um, oh, John Ulmer, uh, he, he, he chimed in. Close port V3 with the brake performance upgrade. I agree. If you get the V3 pedals, spend the extra 20 bucks or whatever it is and buy the brake performance uh, kit. Because that makes a world of difference. Don't get the, um, uh, the, the damper kit. You can skip that. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, let's see. John Finnegan, can I get a heel yeah? Heel yeah. <laughs> I hate spell check. Just put those apostrophes in there. Um, let's see. M Racer 001. Do you think the recent Windows Mixed Reality announcement will enable broader VR inclusion in games since it should be supported easier just like all games run on any monitor um i don't know we'll see um i'm not holding my breath on anything uh that comes out of microsoft i guess um the other day i was thinking about upgrading to the early um the early access of uh the next windows 10 update i can't remember what they're calling it i think it starts with a c um but i i I was like, wait a second, why would I why would I update this? It would just break everything on my computer. It would probably break my triple screens, probably just make games not playable. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I'll believe it when we see it. Um, but I'm a little skeptical at the moment. Uh, John Ulmer, Q&A, why is the Ferrari so awesome? Uh, I think it sounds great. Um, I think it looks, it looks good, too. Uh, da, 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 da. John, thank you for the kudos for doing this on my own. Um... Reading, reading. Uh, Q&A, have you used Deadpool? Have you used Sim Racing System in a set of courses? I have not. Um, been, mean, been meaning to for a long time check out some of the different um, the different ones that have popped up there, That especially for a set of courses. So, uh, just haven't had the time to do so. So um, no promises because I am I am so far backed up on videos uh, just from the last like few months have just been... Um, I've just not not very good at getting videos out, and then I was, you know, then I had really very real life events. Um, so, yeah, I'm playing catch up, and there's just so much uh, so much stuff to to cover. So no promises. Um, let's see. 
Oh, that's what it is, T-Bone. Creator's Update. That's what it was. Creator's Update. I read some stuff on it. I was like, oh, that sounds great. Then I, then I was like, wait a second. It's just going to break stuff. It's like last year where I had to go and I had to do... Uh, um, I had to reload Windows on all like all the PCs after they had that bad update that messed up PCs that had uh, different drives between SSD and standard drives or whatever the issue was. I mean, the only way to fix it was to reinstall Windows. And that was so so frustrating so um yeah i'm just gonna i'll wait till it's out um uh ana kilpatrick should i get a t150 pro or g29 um face to face on performance like i like the the t150 pro more um the g29 i mean i was I drove it last when I did that uh, Dirt 4 deal out in San Francisco, and man, it's just not my favorite. But I will say, they have dropped the price of G29 to like $200 here in the U.S. I've, seen, I've had multiple people um, hit us up about that. And, you know, at $200, that is a good price. So if you're, if you're somewhat limited on what your funds are, to go and get the G29, you know, it's not a bad wheel. It's just that technology has moved on from the technology that it has. Um... You know, to get that and get a three-pedal set isn't a terrible way to go. Actually, I don't mind the break on the G29 too much. Um, the biggest issue the pedals have is it's only 8-bit of resolution, which some things get lost in translation as you uh, as you break. Um, but yeah, the T150 Pro with T3PA pedals is a better um, is a better package. So if you can swing it, I go with that. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, Wim. Thrustmaster has officially started teasing their mystery direct drive wheel. Did you hear more about it than me? Uh, I have not, um, and we as a company have not. So I hit up Darren today because I saw that teaser, and I was like, um, "You know anything?" And he doesn't. Um, I expect I'm going to see that new wheel, whatever it is, at E3 next week. Uh, the amazing thing is, when I was at E3 last year and I was chatting with the, thr the Thrustmaster reps. Um, that wheel had already been shown off at the GT Sport event in May. So I can't believe it's been over a year now that we've seen that wheel, yet we know nothing about it. Um, and also, I, I have to imagine that that wheel was developed, it was so far along in development last year that it was ready for GT Sport to be launched last year, and then it's been put on the shelf since then. Um, so, yeah, I don't know anything new about it. Um, I'm curious if they're going to announce, re unveil it before E3 and then have it at E3 to use, or if they're going to wait till E3 to unveil it. Because um, um, unveiling things at E3 is like no, like for besides the big games, it's not like there's a stage for them to go and like show it off at. So um, I'm out of water. I don't know if that's going to be the case. Um, but no, I'm hoping to drive it. I, honestly, if I, if I if I don't get to get my hands on that wheel, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be uh, frustrated. Um, Let's see, where are we at? Da, da, da. Um, yeah, uh, and also, by the way, we're, I talking about those budget wheels. I mean, if you can go, if you can swing the price to go from a T150 to T300, I mean, that is a nice step up. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. That's a good one. P PTP Racing, I got a TMX Pro for $155 on eBay. That's a good price. Um, do you, Charlie Fun, do you recommend buying secondhand wheels? Um, yeah, I don't discourage it. I have never bought a secondhand wheel myself. Um, to be fair, I've only bought probably three wheels in my life um, before I got hooked up with this gig. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with buying a secondhand wheel. I mean, the only thing you just gotta keep in mind. Is that when you buy it secondhand, there might not be, um, you know, it might be out of warranty, um, and, I, and I, I think most everything's a two-year warranty because that's what the EU uh, requires. Um, so, I mean, that that's the only possible downside in case you have an issue. But I don't think it's a bad way. I mean, we see a lot of people buy and sell wheels on the ISR TV forums, and I think for the most part, it works out well. 
And it's definitely a better way to get a deal. I've seen I've seen some pretty good prices recently on our forums for T300s. Um, Hurley5223. Does any anybody make custom grips with Fnatic Club Sport Formula Rim? Grip is a little small for me. You know, I don't know that answer. Um, but that was my complaint of that rim. That's a really, I mean, it's, I think the, the Formula Rim is really nice. Uh, my only complaint was it really made my hands cramp after racing in a 24 hours Daytona. Um... And it's like, I, I've, I've thought about almost wrapping, doing some kind of like bicycle handle wrap around it or wheel, or um, yeah, like a wheel wrap or something. Um, so I hope if Fnatic comes out with an updated Formula Rim sometime, I'd like to see him go from 26 centimeter diameter to 28, and then thicker grips, more like the TSPC Racer, uh, which has a lot thicker grips. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see... No, I mean I agree, Wim. That 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 um, a Thrustmaster wheel will most likely be the official GT Sport wheel. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I do get some wheels for free. Um, M Racer zero zero one. Do you think with the cameras slash scanners used in VR, you could use them to scan button boxes so you can use them better when in VR, or would it be too hard to implement? Camera scanners using very few use them to scan button boxes. I'm not sure. I'm not entirely following what your scan them like. You can like you know where in space they're at. Um, I'm not sure if that's what you're getting at. Um, let's see. No, yeah, that's all I got right now. Well, if we don't we don't have more questions. I'll 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 wrap this up. We've done pretty well. Um, there was something else I was going to mention, but I don't remember. Uh, okay, so yeah, okay, so I'm racing. Okay, talking about okay. Um, you might be able to. I, I actually I like to think that the fidelity is high enough that I guess you could like technically scan something with those cameras. I don't know. It's an interesting idea. That would be that would be fascinating to know. I mean the. the and we've talked about this before. The thing with VR, you just got to get down to muscle memory on where those buttons are at. Um, so, uh, gaming setup. Okay, well, I think we're going to go and we're going to wrap it up there because uh, questions are slowing down and my voice is slowing down. And uh, I got to go play softball in a couple hours. And hopefully it doesn't rain. It's always a shame when that happens. So um, anyway, thank you for joining us this week inside Sim Racing. I apologize we had such a long break. Uh, it was nice to get back. Like I said at the top of the show, I think um, got a lot of things to do. So I think like to some degree, I'm always, almost going to like worry less about some of the quality of the show. And it's more about just interacting with you guys. So uh, that'll save us time. Um, Oh, when are the inverted clothes for pedals getting reviewed? That's another one that I was hoping to get out before E3, but I think I'm going to get out this Fnatic uh, wheel out first. But, um, but yeah, so anyway, happy to be back. Happy to be chatting with you guys. We'll play catch up. And uh, there should be a lot more videos coming over the next uh, month or two because we just got just got a lot of stuff. So, um, so for John Sable, thank you for joining us on This Week Inside Sim Racing. See you fine people next week.